Wow, the high school football season is upon us, and we have you covered all the way through the playoffs. And hello, everyone. I'm Dom Tiberi, and welcome to First and Ten. And I'm Dave Holmes. Ten weeks of regular season. We start with ten games tonight. The 10 TV marketing department salivating. A lot of branding going on here. Dom, we begin, as always, with our game of the week. Yeah, yeah. Hosting Big Walnut, a rematch of last year's opener in which the Eagles won 35 to 7. But this year's game, Hartley looking for some payback. Second quarter, and check out the Hawks' Bryson Winbush. Getting it done in for the touchdown. Well, getting into scoring position, setting them up. And then just a couple plays later, it is Ryan Perry and the offensive line pushing their way into the end zone. The Hawks led 7-2. And then it is the Hartley defense getting the job done. Big Walnut wants the throw, but Brendan Lorette there with the interception. He knows what to do, brings it back for the touchdown. Hartley gets payback as they win 21-19. Hillier Davidson coming off a season in which they won a playoff game, hoping for a deeper run this year. The Wildcats open in the season at home against the West Cowboys. Big night for the Hillier Davidson offense. First quarter, Keevan Gibbon gets lost in the crowd, just like me in junior high school. Ends up turning it into a 20-yard touchdown. Davidson leads 7-0. A few minutes later, Wildcats strike again. Mikey Clark, what a way for Mikey to start his senior season. 35 yards, you can forget about it. Touchdown, Davidson. It's 14-0, and then Johnny de Blasio gets in on the fun. The Wildcat quarterback keeps it a 22-yard scoring play. Hillier Davidson wins big in the season opener. Final score, 56 to nothing. Now, Watkins Memorial is coming off their best season in 16 years, but it ended a little sooner than they hoped. That heartbreaking playoff loss to Big Walnut. Tonight, the Warriors hosting Worthington Kilbourne rematch of last year's opening night. Third quarter, Kilbourne's punt is blocked by Victor Oliver right in the hands of Rocco Pascal. Rocco kept his receipt. He'd like to return this, please. 55 yards for a Warrior touchdown. It's 14-0. Fourth quarter now, Watkins driving. Drew Samsel rolls out and just chucks it into the night sky. John Apples, 45 yards downfield. He goes and gets it. Oh and then my. two plays later, it's Samsel to Jaden Ricketts. Seven-yard touchdown. Watkins Memorial pitches a shutout, 21 to nothing. All right, next up, we head to Upper Arlington. The Golden Bears hosting the Purple Raiders of Reynoldsburg. Both these teams hoping for big things this season. Third quarter, Golden Bears are up 14-0 and wanting more. Kyle Cox to Austin Stutz for the 10-yard touchdown. And the Bears led 21 to nothing. And Upper Arlington going to keep it going. Check out Connor McClellan. Running hard the way Dave Holmes used to do it back in his days in, uh, where were you? Uh, Hartville, Ohio. Yeah, 28 to nothing game. Fourth quarter, Reynoldsburg trying to come back. Check out this strike from Jaron Mock to Cerise Weaver. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a bullet on the spot. 30 yard touchdown. Uh, the uh, try for two was no good. 28-6 game. Upper Arlington goes on to win 35-6. All right, so uh, that is what? Four games down, right? Mm -hmm. Four yep. games down, and that means we have more to go. The math is simple here. Six games left, right? Six games to go still, plus our top plays of the night. First and ten coming back right after this. Yeah, the fans wild there. Welcome back to the season premiere of First and Ten. Earlier in the show, we had Bishop Hartley. But, Dom, if we're playing chess right now, we still need one more bishop. Absolutely. And we have you covered with the Knights, the Golden Knights of Bishop Reedy, taking on the green wave of Newark Catholic. <laughs> Game being played in Obetz at the Fortress. Third quarter, Reedy up 25-14 in the green wave. Come back. 
Miller Hutchinson with the shot to Theo Talbot for the touchdown. The lead was cut 25-21. Reed comes back though. Kentrell Reinhardt running hard for the nine yard touchdown. Knights led 32-21. Reinhardt just getting warmed up late in the third. Another 10 yard touchdown, 39-21 game. And Kentrell Reinhardt with one more in the fourth quarter. This one from 24 yards out. Bishop Reedy rolls 53-21. And the hits, they keep on coming as we head to Whetstone. The Braves hosting the Eagles of Watterson. This is a backyard battle. You know, the two schools less than a mile apart. Pick it up in the third quarter. Watterson's up 37 to nothing and wanting more. Rudy Kessinger connected on the 42-yard field goal. Eagles led 40 to nothing at that point. Fourth quarter, special teams hurting the Braves. The uh, punt snap is high. And the Eagles recover on the five yard line. That would set up another touchdown right here as they take it in. Watterson rolls 47 to nothing. You know, it's been a crazy week in New Albany as their Little League team is playing in the World Series. But tonight, all the focus was on the Golden Eagles high school football team. Our Adam King has us covered under the lights. I'm not saying that football directly controls the weather, but it is week one of high school football, and it definitely feels like fall out here, a little chill in the air. Speaking of week one, we may just be getting started, but we're handing out trophies tonight. We have history and a crosstown rivalry, plus one team hoping for revenge already. We're going to start with that revenge matchup in New Albany. Earplugs recommended tonight at New Albany, but the Monarchs bring the mute button quickly. The QB sneak, Borkwin, if you need that yard, he'll get you a yard. 7-0 Marysville, but the Eagles come back. They fake out the camera and the Monarchs, and entering the scene is Joseph Owasu, and there goes Joe for six. And when you score a touchdown, that means it's time for six push-ups, or however many he feels like doing. But we said this was a revenge game. Last season, New Albany beat Marysville week one. This year, it's the Monarchs turn. Boquin lets it fly. The fans say that's a touchdown. So do the refs and Marysville. They go on to win 24 to 17. Over to Westerville North versus Central. Former Ohio State quarterback Stanley Jackson, his first game, he'll like this. Trey McDonald steps into the pass and McDonald orders the pick six. North up 14 to six. And then the play of the night, no doubt. Vari Adams, how does he do this? The one-handed grab for the touchdown. And listen, when you make a catch like that, you deserve to dance. Warriors fans dancing tonight because they beat Central for the first time in more than a decade. Oh man, it's great. This is why we came here to Westerville North. It's a new North, is all we've been saying. It's not the same old Westerville North. Uh, we're excited. This football team has a, a new rejuvenation about them. Well, there you have it. A new Westerville order coming to North here, and they've already made a statement in just game one. But we're not done with high school football, so I'll throw it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Adam. Now, at the beginning of every high school football season, there are a few teams who are at the top of the state championship picture. You can never count out Pickerington Central. Tonight, the Tigers opening the season on the road against the Olentangy Liberty Patriots. Let's pick this game up in the first quarter. Liberty up 3-0, but Central response. Jawan Alexander goes eight yards for a Tiger TD. Central takes a 7-3 lead. Very next possession for Liberty. Patriots back to pass, but Mike Jones claims ownership of that football and declares it property of pick Central. Two plays later, the Tigers cash it in. Aaron Heller, touchdown Pickerington. Tigers get a win on opening night by the final score of 28-17. Dublin Scioto on the road against Grove City first quarter. Grove City lights up the board. Matthew Pappas on the quarterback draw. Three yards for a Greyhound touchdown. It's 7-0 Grove City. Dublin Scioto comes back. Jack McKee play fake. He looks to Nakota Denzel. Nakota does the rest. 14 yards for an Irish touchdown game tied at 7. Grove City gets the ball back. Matthew Pappas has bad intentions to a streaking Owen Steele. 43-yard drop in the bucket. Greyhound touchdown. 
Grove City takes the lead. They would never give it back. Kale Snyder from four yards out. Greyhound offense goes berserk in this one. Grove City wins 59 to 20. So now we've seen 10 games. We've seen a lot of plays. A few plays, though, stood out from the rest. After the break, we're going to look back at some of the best moments from week one of first and 10. Don't go away. We are not done with first and 10. Right now, it is time for our top plays of the night. Yeah, we saw some great ones out there tonight. Our cameras on hand to capture them. Let's take a look at our plays of the night. We begin with Watkins Memorial. It's always good when you put points on the board on special teams. Victor Oliver with the block. Rocco Pascal, right place, right time. He gets on his horse and scores a touchdown for the Warriors. An incredible way to put six on the board. All right, next up, Reynoldsburg quarterback Jaron Mock, and, and I talked about this kid earlier, 30-yard touchdown strike to Cerise Weaver. What an arm there. Yeah, good arm here, too. Back to Watkins Memorial, Drew Samsel finding John Apple. You know, he just said, you know what? Who cares? He's down there somewhere. Chuck it up. Let John make a play on it. He does for 45 yards. Well, First and 10 is back. That means school is back in session as well. So is our 10 TV Athlete of the Week Award, sponsored by Incova Insurance. Nominate someone at 10TV.com slash Athlete of the Week. Can you believe high school's here? And that's going to do it. It's One down. For Adam King, he's Dave Holmes. I'm Dom Tiberi. Good night, everyone.